Welcome to session three of Catch the Vision. So let's just pause for a moment. Uh, you now know where we're going. Uh, you know kind of who we are, kind of the people that are gonna be on this train. The third most important question is this, how do we get there? In other words, um, what's the role of the leaders? What's the role of a participating member? Um, what do elders do? What do staff do? Uh, how do you function? What's your strategy? What's your philosophy? What I wanna do in our time now is give you a big picture overview of what I call a biblical philosophy of ministry, our strategy in order to help everyone become Romans 12 Christians, and then how are we going to measure that? In other words, this catalytic environment in this dark area that partners with other churches to produce disciples here, there, and everywhere, how does it really work? I mean, point A, you're saying, I resonate with the vision. I kind of like what you're saying about the people and where you're going. I need to know how does it really work. So let's start first with roles. God in Ephesians chapter 4 has made it very, very clear about the role of leaders, the role of members, and how those things interact with one another. Uh, if you will, look at your notes there and notice in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 11, it says, and he gave some as apostles and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ. Now notice he says why. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Now, what I want you to know is that we do uh, multiple sessions, in fact, a complete small group teaching on how this actually operates. But let me give you the high points. The high points are this. Every leader is an equipper, whether that's an elder, a staff person, or a lay leader. The goal of leaders is not to do the ministry. It's not that we don't do ministry. But our job is to equip the saints. And uh, this translation, a saint just means a believer, an authentic follower of Jesus. It's to equip the saints, and notice what it says, to do the work of the ministry. Well, what's the work of the ministry? Counseling, loving, serving, helping with kids, social justice, compassion, partnering with other churches, feeding the homeless, uh, loving one another, supporting one another, teaching God's word. I mean, it's the ministry. See, God created us as a body, and just like our head has a role, and our arms have a role, and our, our feet have a role, God has created a body where the goal of leadership is to equip the members. Well, then, what's the goal of a member? And by member, I'm not talking just member of the church. I mean a member of the body of Christ. Are you ready? Every member is a full-time minister. Now, pause on that. This is very biblical, but very radical. I've been sort of doing this church thing for a long time, and I've pastored churches from, you know, like 35 people up to several thousand. And I will tell you is that the American church especially, but even around the world, the paradigm got shifted. And the paradigm got shifted to we all come to a meeting. And that one pastor or two pastors, they do the work and we come and tell them, here's all of our problems or here's our friends that we want you to help or here's our friends in the hospital we want you to visit and it's backwards. And what happens is, let me just say this nicely, pastors hog unintentionally all the good stuff of getting to be used by God to transform lives when actually God's plan was that we as pastors would get to equip every single person that you lead people to Christ, you visit people in the hospital, you counsel, you get to teach. God uses you to restore marriages and help kids. God puts something on your heart for social justice. God helps you develop families. Our job is to help you do that. And then as people go out into the companies and out into the communities and out to the coffee shops and out where people, you know, at their, their spas and fitness places, we equip you, you're a full member, you're an ordained minister of the gospel. You're the greatest Christian someone will ever meet. And so we wanna help you learn to, 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 to know God's word, to be able to articulate your faith, to um, work through the issues that we all have, to have the kind of marriage that honors God, to teach you skills to, to parent your children, to, to be a single person that, that walks in purity and who's winsome and loving, so that as you go out from 
Venture Christian Church. You're that catalyst and you make a difference. And so the responsibility then is that, wow, you are a minister. And so one of the big shifts that you really want to know about Venture Christian Church is that myself as a pastor, our team of pastors and our elders, it's not our job to pastor everyone. Okay, let, let that sink in. It's our job to make sure everyone gets pastored. And so as you look at your notes here, you'll notice that every leader is an equipper, but let me give you some biblical justification for what I just said. Notice what Peter wrote in 1 Peter 2, verses four and five. And coming to him, Jesus, as to a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God, you also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. What I want you to know is that God is building up us into a body and the spiritual sacrifices that you offer is when you discover your gifts, your role in the body, and he uses you in a unique way. And I wanna remind you, there are no little people there are no little places. I'm sorry, we don't have small jobs. There's no small jobs in God's perspective. From someone that's holding a baby, from someone who's called to be a stay-at-home mom, from someone who's a CEO and you know casting a vision across the bay or across the globe, at Venture Christian Church, that's just a team of people that have come together and each have learned what God has made them to do and we all need each other and so our goal is to help you discover what your role is. First, to become a Romans 12 Christian, right? To be mature. I mean, we're going to equip you by God's word, by time in small groups, by classes that we offer, by individual mentoring over time, to be a man or a woman that's surrendered to God from the heart, that is separate from the world's values and your thinking and your practice, that has a sober, honest, self-assessment, that you're secure in who you are, nothing to prove, nothing to lose, that you're, you're serving in love because you care about people, because the, the Holy Spirit, the Christ in you, is calling you out to love others. And then in the difficulty and pain of life, you're supernaturally responding to adversity and evil and even pain and injustice the way Jesus did. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And so as you become that kind of mature believer, we go to the next level and we believe we're called as leaders to help you discover, are you ready for this? Why God put you on the earth. We call it a holy ambition or your Ephesians 2.10 calling. God says it before the foundations of the earth. He has a good work for you to walk in. Your personality, your background, even your hurts, even your mistakes, your difficulties, your DNA, your spiritual gifts, your personality, God has placed all that together for a unique role and job to make a difference in the world that only you can do. Our job as leaders is to help you discover that. And so you'll hear about discovering your holy ambition. And doesn't it make sense if God has a big job for you to do that he has actually wired you, made you, and gifted you to do that? And so the role of leaders is to equip the role of every member is to be a minister. And then our role in helping you as a member is to discover your purpose, discover your gifts, help you grow in maturity. And then you'll just see as you kind of look through all that we do here, we provide classes, small group resources, electives, books, all kind of ways. Because along the way, you kind of have to learn to communicate in your marriage. You have to sort of figure out uh, how to do life at work under pressure. And so we're going to obviously deal with lots of felt needs, but we deal with those felt needs to become men and women who discover our passion, our heart, what God made us to do, and team together to do what? Be a catalyst in the Bay Area, to turn this place from a place of darkness to a place of a strategic place where the gospel is producing disciples organically, catalytically, in homes and businesses and in multiculturals all throughout the Bay, and what we know about here is then people go from here all around the world. Leaders equip, every member is a minister. And by the way, in case you get a little scared, notice in your notes, no one ministers alone. 
You know, in Romans 12, when you look at verses three through five, it talks about how the body operates. We minister in teams around here. And then you don't have to have it all together. You don't have to be Mr. or Miss Adequate and everything. We do it gift-based. In other words, you're in a team because God made you a part of the body. He's gifted you for a specific role. And then I love where uh, it picks it up in verse 13. We're love-driven. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Uh, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. And so what we have here is no one's going to minister alone. And by the way, if some of you are kind of looking at this and think, oh, this sounds a little bit too good to be true, it's a lot more messy than what I'm describing, right? I mean, th these are real people. Stuff falls through the cracks. Uh, you know, I signed up for this. No one got back with me on that. But here's what you need to hear. The roles around here our leaders are going to equip we're gonna help you become a full-time minister equipped by God to make a real difference, and you're not gonna do it alone. Now, that's sort of the, the roles. Now, let me step back and say, well, what structures do we use? And what I mean by that is that, you know, we've all gone to church, right? And, um, or maybe you're new and you haven't gone to church much, but you're probably aware that they tend to meet weekly, right? You know, it might be a group of 35 or 3,000 or 5,000 or 200, but they meet weekly, uh, usually on Sunday, and there's worship and there's the teaching of God's Word. And so I call that large group meetings. And so what I want to do is I want to go through and rather than you just from your background or mine, think about, oh yeah, here's all the meetings that churches have and I suppose I'm supposed to go to so many of them. I want to describe the three sizes of church structures that Venture Christian has, why we have them, and then what the goal of them are. Because the goal might be different than you think. Are you ready? We've got roles, leaders, members, no one ministers alone. Now here's the structures. We have large group meetings, medium-sized groups, and small groups. Large group meetings, uh, over 100, or in our case, on the weekends, uh, most of the services are anywhere from 600 to 1,000, 1,100 people. The large group is geared around two fundamental goals, worshiping God, you know, there's something that happens in a larger group and gifted worship people and, and being able to see how great and big and high and, and realize you're not alone and the instruction of God's word. That's our goal in our larger groups. Our medium-sized groups are 20 to 100. Maybe, maybe it could be up to, you know, maybe 100 or so. Um, could be as low as 20 or 25 or 30. But medium-sized groups are around what I call affinity. It might be uh, the ushers get together. It might be we have a team of about 80 people that are committed to reaching the Korean population. We have a, a group of 40 or 50 uh, that speak Mandarin or want to reach Mandarin-speaking people. We have others that are, you know, committed to helping unwed mothers. We have a, another group of uh, 30 or so that are moms that come and pray on a regular basis. I mean, we have multiple, multiple mid-sized groups. We have classes that we would have for parenting over here, on marriage over here, or um, high school, college. I mean, we have all kind of different size groups around affinity. And the goal here is to meet specific needs, be able to move out of a very large group where there's identity. You know, I get it with this people. We have a group called Analog of high-tech people that meet once a month, and you know, they're all in the tech world. They speak the same language. So when I think of the medium-sized groups, I think of them often as an intermediate step. You know, it's a pretty big stretch for some people to go from a large auditorium into someone's living room and begin to talk. It's also a place where you can identify with people that are a little bit more like you and get some very specific needs met. There might be a class that you need right now or a skill that you need right now, or maybe it's an opportunity where you realize you wanna experience and begin to test out your gifts. And you know you wanna be able to teach or you wanna be able to serve or be on a ministry team. Medium-sized groups provide a place that's not so overwhelming. And so we feel like, although I don't have a biblical reference for a medium-sized group, we think they're critical to make the move from the large group to the small group and at times, to have things challenged in a small group and realize I need to go to a medium group to get some skills that I don't currently have. And then the small group, and by the small group, it may start larger, 20 or 25 people, but we subgroup around here so that our small groups are, you know, anywhere from three to 10 people. In other words, it's a small enough group, and this is where life change really occurs, heart to heart, 
accountability, vulnerability. Uh, when what's shared in there stays there, it's th this is your core of people that you're going to do life with. And for many of you, that looks different. Some it's a, a small group of women, others a small group of men. Uh, some of you do it uh, in a class. Uh, we know that some people in our church, because of their travel, they might do that with three people from other churches at six in the morning at a Starbucks before they fly off into the Pacific Rim or have to go into business. But there's three or four people that they are doing life with at a deep, deep level. And so here's what I can tell you. In Scripture, it's very clear. From the model of Jesus to the early church, he disciples in small groups and he teaches in large groups. Jesus taught the multitudes, and then he had small groups. The early church met in the temple, large group, and there were small groups, and they met house to house. We think in the American culture, uh, the mid-sized groups allow us, I don't have a, I don't have a biblical passage for it, but I think methodology-wise, it's just a great halfway house to help people get connected. So now, I need you to lean back on this one because this might come as a shock. We want people to come and worship God corporately. We want people to go to a class or get help or teach a class that they need. And we want everyone to be doing life in a small group. Now, here's the deal. We don't want you coming to all of those, okay? I mean, I've been to a church, actually I pastored it, which I was really guilty, that I felt like we gave people like a whole nother job. Uh, have you ever been to one of those churches? And I don't mean this critically, because I actually pastored one where we did this. It, you need to be there on Sunday morning, Sunday night. If you're a leader, be there on Tuesday night. We have another special meeting where you go help people on Wednesday night. Um, there's a small group that you need to. Then you need to pre prepare for that. And pretty soon you have people, they don't know any non-Christians. Their lives are filled with Christian activities. Here's what I want you to hear. Our goal, right, is not methods, traditions, or coming to meetings. Our goal is outcomes. Our outcome is what? That you would become a Romans 12 Christian, a mature disciple. To become a Romans 12 Christian, which is the profile, we have learned that you need life, not meetings. You need relationship, not religion. And so, listen very, very carefully. We have what we call a pathway to becoming a disciple that helps you choose which of those meetings you need to be in. I can tell you that all of us need to be in that large group on a regular basis, and all of us need to be in a small group on a regular basis. What you need to discern is what other interaction you need depending on your season of growth. So here's the pathway, are you ready? B-I-O, look in your notes. We call it bio, like biology, right? Biogenetics, it, it's, 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 it means life. It's an acronym for what I'm going to tell you as a participating member signing up for Venture Christian Church is that I as the pastor and one of the leaders would hold you responsible, that you're responsible before God to make bio a part of your life. Now, now before you get a little uptight, that's gonna be in your season, at your level, you may take baby steps and we'll show you how. But the B stands for coming before God corporately in worship on a regular basis and before God daily. Uh, there is no way that you're gonna become like Jesus unless you come before God and get in his word and talk with him. I mean, everybody, it's not legalism, everybody misses a day here and there, but you're coming to a church that highly values the Bible, that this is God's word and his word is what transforms our minds and our lives. And we want people not out of duty and not out of just, you know, ought to, got to. But there is no way that unless you come before God and share your heart and he renews your mind, that you are going to mature. So that's your responsibility. If you're a baby Christian, it might be, you know, eight or 10 minutes with a little reading program or some helps and five minutes of talking with God. If you're a mature Christian, it might be heavy duty study for an hour in the morning. I don't know. But you need to make a commitment to be on a pathway to get before God daily. Second, when you get into God's word and he speaks to you, what you'll find is the commands in this book are in the second person plural. I lived in Texas for a while. This is what this means. You all love one another. You all honor one another. You all care for one another. You all, right? In other words, you can't obey what God is showing you by yourself. 
It's impossible. The Christian life is impossible on our own. We're called to do life the I is for in community. Notice I didn't say in small group. The, the, the container is almost always a small group, but we do life in community weekly. Every week, you need to be sharing. And sometimes it might be on a screen, sometimes it might be face to face, but we, we believe that people have to do life heart to heart, face to face, where you're honest and vulnerable, where you are giving love, receiving love, where people can speak into your life, where they will support you, that if you would be in the hospital or a struggle in your marriage or one of your kids having a hard time or you find yourself in addiction, there's a group of people that will rally around you and say, you will not go through this alone. We are here for you. See, that's the level of committed. Read Romans 12 afresh. It says devoted to one another in brotherly love, devoted to one another in prayer. So this really, as you move through the life of venture, this isn't kind of a place that you come and you know sit and listen to me or someone else teach and say, hey, music's pretty good, you know, like what you're doing for the kids and nice program for the high school and you know, that's not us. That's a beginning place. But you will be held responsible to be in a group. In fact, there's a covenant that you'll sign I mean, we take this very seriously. There's a covenant that you'll sign that you'll say before God, by His grace, I'm, I'm, I'm committing, you know, on my journey to come before Him. And I'm committed to do life in community. I'm going to be in some kind of a small group that I've described. And then the O, are you ready, is on mission. And, and of course, this is serving, uh, being a servant, have a serving's heart, taking, doing what God shows you to do. But this is on mission 24 seven. See, the great, great thing that's happened at Venture Christian Church is people are beginning to see that Christianity and walking with Jesus isn't something you do on Sunday or Saturday night. They're beginning to see that it's integrated to all of life. In fact, are you ready for this? I don't wanna even use the word spiritual life. No one has a spiritual life. You just have a life. And you have a spiritual component, an emotional component, and a relational component. And we want you to be, I want you, I want men to get up in the morning that are married and say, I'm on mission. How do I serve my wife? And if you happen to have kids, then look in the bedroom and say, I'm the father. I'm on mission. How do I love them? And as I pull out of the driveway and see these houses where I'm pulling out, I'm on mission. This is my calling, this neighborhood. Do they know Jesus? Am I loving them? When's the next barbecue at my house? And then when you pull up to the job site or the construction, Inside or, or when you get on a plane that you say, I'm on mission. And what we want to do is help you learn the skills, the knowledge, the character, the support, and the heart so that the living Christ living inside of you will grow you to the point that you'll impact your world and beyond. Can you begin to see these points of lights multiplying? That's the catalytic venture Christian church. And so let me stop and review. We've said, okay, how are you going to get there? We're gonna get there by knowing our roles. Leaders equip, every member is a minister, no one ministers alone. We're gonna realize that there's structures, there's large groups, medium groups, and small groups. The two non-negotiables are large group and small group. Those are biblical. Third, we're gonna say that there's a pathway, bio, coming before God daily, doing life in community weekly, and being on mission 24 seven, will kind of be your guideline now, what you need to do is say, this is the class that I need to mature me right now. Uh, we have a series of classes, and you'll see in some of the literature there, we have a very clear game plan lined out so that you can know the pathway. But the balance here is people can't come for years and just take classes and learn and learn and learn and grow and eat and eat and eat. That's called getting fat. But we can't have people just serving, 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 and not learning and growing. And so together, you pray and ask, what season are you in? We as leaders will try and provide the best that we can, a steady diet emotionally, spiritually, physically, and opportunity-wise to help you discover how God made you, what he wants you to do, and how you fit. For many of you, your ministry will be outside the walls of the church. For many others, you'll be inside the walls of the church. You'll love children, you'll be an usher, you'll do things with finance, you'll be a teacher. Our goal is not to get you to fit into slots that we have. Our goal is to help you discover the slot that God has for you, his actual calling in your life. And so there's the roles, 
there's a structure, and I think you've got the expectations. Um, again, I just have to tell you, it's not always super clean. It has a little messy parts. There's some real responsibility on your side and some big responsibility on our side. But where are we gonna go? We're going to be a catalyst to transform the Bay Area. Who's there? We've talked about our culture, our values, what really matters, and you can kind of know the kind of people that we are and the things that make us tick. Now, how do we get there? We're gonna get there by you and me honoring the biblical philosophy and strategy set forth by Jesus and one person at a time moving forward to make a real difference. So, you still on board? What do you think? I can't wait for you to get some time to talk with some other people and kick this around. Some of this model's different than maybe a lot of churches you've been in, but this is the model that God has called Venture Christian Church to. I invite you to explore it.